right, we're going to jump back into this. Whenever I talk about this subject, um, whether it be in counseling or in speaking forums or whatever, just know um, that it gives your, your mind permission to hear those arrestments. So you might have came in like, I'm going to get knowledge. And all of a sudden you're like, Ugh. And it's just got that feeling of like, wow, I didn't think this was going to get dug up or there's some, going to be some kind of emotion that gets dug up. The thing that we need to understand is that uh, many times our subconscious will bring the emotion forward, but we don't remember the cognitive part of it, right? We don't remember, like um, I'm missing third and fourth grade. I've said that uh, at Unshackled before. It's like I'm missing third and fourth grade. I, I try to remember it. I don't, my mom said I had a best friend. I don't remember her at all. You know, my mom remembers it all, but third and fourth grade was gone for me. And um, so there's certain things that maybe traumas take place that um, will place that sensation inside of you. But then when you go to remember cognitively, you got nothing. So then it makes you feel crazy because you are having the sensation. Uh, for instance, I don't know what happened, but one memory in my life of I was told to go to bed, didn't want to go to bed when I was a kid, uh, grade school, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember if it was a nap during the day or what the deal was, but I must have been pretty little. And I didn't want to go to sleep, and I felt violated by the fact that my parents said, go lay down, which to me translated as go away from me. And why it translated that was because there was so much other stuff going on that you know I already had that sensation. So that's how I filtered and heard them, whether they were just trying to make me take a nap or not, that's how I heard them. So I'm laying in the bed, and um, I can remember just falling asleep I don't know how long I was sleeping, but I woke up just half out of it, and there was a spider on my face. And it was a big, probably, I don't know what was doing in the house, but like a garden spider with those big fat backs, right? You know, this one had the little horns on the bell. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> I already got that feeling. And um, I remember as a child, it felt something was hurting me here, and that's probably what woke me up. And I remember doing this with my hand and half out of it, and I brought my fingers together, and it popped. So it bit me and it popped. Now that's not like a crocodile biting you in half or you know something that would be at this high level of intensity, right? But what ends up happening is if you don't walk through just that, okay, that's nobody, you know, beat you up or anything, but walking through that and having the right information to deal with that, I didn't. And when I went to get help for it, it was like, oh, forget about it, it's just a spider or whatever. No, actually it traumatized me. How my brain received that, somebody else might have been fine, but how my brain received it, the sensation of it till today, I get a funny feeling on my face. I can almost hear the pop, just like, and it, oh, you know, then I get this sick feeling like I have it right now, like my mouth is watering right now. It's kind of like you have to throw up. I won't, but it gives that, that, that feeling, right? So I'm raised on a farm, and this might sound gross, if you're out, you're, you're, pitching hay or you're in the the silo when you're pitching si silage or whatever sometimes there'd be mice in there and you got a big fork and i'll right through the mouse right didn't bother me at all it's like well you should have moved <laughs> that's just that's my my program yours might be different but it's like you don't belong in the silage anyway this is for the cows and so um that was my thing but you compare that then to the spider on my face now why did that traumatize me and i can put a fork through a mouse and it's like, oh, well, that's gross. Anyway, move on. See, our, the sensations of how we remember things depends on our age group, the trauma we were feeling. It, it can even depend on how your body receives certain sensations. Everybody's made differently, right? That's why one person shouldn't tell the other person you shouldn't feel that way. It's just a spider, you shouldn't feel that way. Well, actually, I do feel that way. That's the problem. <laughs> I already feel that way. We should be talking about how we're going to work through that. So a sensation can come up in you. And I actually remember that one memory. Um, but what if I didn't? And I still had the sensation. Some of us have a sensation of something that is like our, our senses will bring it forward, but we don't remember it in the cognitive mind. And our body will react like it's happening right now. And then it makes you feel weird because there's no pictures coming up in your head as to why am I feeling this way? Yeah? 
Um, one of the things that can happen is, um, let's say that you were towered over, and hopefully you weren't towered over, um, but, you know, like say you had a, an uncle that was just a, a big guy, and he's telling you what to do when you're three, and you don't ever come in this room again. He's towering over you. That creates a sensation, and you might remember that memory. You might not. You might have been terrified of him. Didn't know him that well. He's visiting from Chicago, let's say. And all of a sudden, you're like, why is he yelling at me? And then he leaves. It created a sensation in you that if somebody comes by and they're just like, hi, Katie. See, I'm above her. Her body might actually go, Whew, and she not know why. Because we're recalling something in, in our, our senses, but the cognitive is not there. How many of you know you have something like that? Yeah. And... Um, I've had a few things like that, and I've asked the Lord, and he's shown me, but there's other things I'm still trying to discover, and when I can't discover it, I just start talking to the sensation and saying, look, here's the deal. This is what's happening in the now, and you give it a reality check. Right now, at this moment, I'm not being towered over, right? I'm, I'm having this or whatever. Whatever the sensation is, then you have to address it. If you don't address it, it will increase. They call it ramping up. It, it will start to ramp, and you can feel, you'll feel that ramping up. Uh, some of us have been chased through the house and with yelling and stuff when we were kids, and, and you know, maybe um, harsh spankings. You know, and I say that, um, it just meant that it was in an abusive manner, um, things like that. And so then all of a sudden, maybe it's a woman, and her husband says, what do, you, what do you mean by that? And you're in the kitchen, and all of a sudden a sensation goes through your body that you should run. You should get out now. And you're looking at him, and he's not really coming at you with a knife or anything, but the sensation is that, and suddenly you freeze, and you go back to the arrestment whenever it was, and you can't talk. Maybe it, you, you were that young, you, or you have nothing to say, or only a sentence comes out, and you're froze in time right there, all because of the sensation. It'll make you feel crazy. But if you know what's happening, see, then you can get a hold of it. You can go, oh, that's one of those things Mary was talking about. I'm not crazy. I'm just reliving a sensation of something that took place. We record things through our five senses. So uh, one of the things that I, I, I can get you to recall something in your body will react. Like, for instance, let's just do something right now. Let's put your, put your hand out, and I'm going to put in your hand. It's all fake. I'm going to put in your hand an orange, and I want you to peel the orange. Just go ahead and peel that. It's going to be really good. Think about how good this orange is going to be. See the juice? This is a juicy one, right? And, uh, and, and you're peeling it. Your body's already getting ready to receive that, and it's not even really there, right? And so if you take it even further and you go to take a bite, your tongue will have a sensation. You'll have more spit in your mouth than normal. And why? Because your, your body's already getting ready for it to be tart or to be, you know, acidic. See? So that's how a sensation can come through. If you think about candy... You know, uh, think about chocolate. There's, a, there's like a, a rush feeling that can go on. It might not even be here in your mouth, but there's that feeling like, I got to get me some chocolate. You don't, you don't even know. There's a sensation in your body. It's the dopamine that's going, yeah, I need to, I need to go off right now. That's what needs to happen. And, and so we, we can, if we're not recognizing that, a sensation can take us down a path and we can make some really poor decisions all based on something that is a sensation in our body. And um, if you recognize it, then you start to be in tune with yourself. Here's what happens. The, the arrestment areas, and if we have a lot of them, we've been through trauma, we're not paying attention to ourselves because we can't grow ourselves, right? A six-year-old, eight-year-old that's arrested in development, that part of it that's stuck here, it doesn't have permission to move on. So we're not thinking about, hmm, I wonder how I can mature. I wonder how I can move ahead. We're just thinking about surviving. Who's coming next? Who's coming up to the cell next? Who's going to talk to me? Who's going to want something from me? Who, who's going to hurt me again? So we're thinking outward. We're not developing inward. And, and so then that makes it difficult um, because then we get hypervigilant toward whoever's even approaching. If help is right in front of us, we'll be hypervigilant and back out. No, it's okay. We'll back up because we want help, but we really don't want help. You ever experience that? You'll get that in a simple way. If, if you feel like crying and you come to church, let's say, you feel like crying, but you got, I don't know, you got to serve in the media and you're like, okay, I'm going through something right now. And then all of a sudden, uh, Kevin turns to him and says, you doing okay? <sighs> What'd you do that for, Kevin? <laughs> because now that's like approaching it and saying, 
uh, whatever's coming up, the fear, the little boy inside of you, the little girl inside of you, you doing okay? You're not really talking to the most mature part of that person. Now suddenly you're talking to that part that's like, I, I see you in there. You, you all right? See, and then that, that side of us then has to decide, do I want to give an answer? Because if I say, no, I'm not all right, I'm actually asking you to come help rescue me. I don't really know you that well. Are you going to hurt me again? <sighs> There's a lot that goes on in there. So we go, nah, no, I've been handling this for like 20 years already. I got it. No, I'm good. No, I'm good. Really, I'm good. And we back away so they can't necessarily see us and sit in the dark. And then we come over here to that side that's more of our, we're just going to project what we want, what you want to see, I'll give you. Right? The church is going to come back to a place of realness yeah. and transparency. Yeah. I mean, how I know that is just not so we can all sit around having a crying session. But we're going to get transparent because of forgiveness and repentance and revival and all those things of great awakening. When, when that happens, it's, it's because we're being transparent. See, it's because we said, go ahead and open the cell and I'm going to step out. Well, you know what? If you open a cell in something, you know, I ministered to a person this last week. Uh, I was like, here, let me, let me help you out. I'll, I'll open this up. Here's God's word. I'll open it up. And all of a sudden they're standing and I'm like, no, actually you can come forward. No, seriously, you can come out. Hello, no, you want me to, no, okay, you don't want me to touch you? Come on. That's how it was intense for them to move forward in that timing. They, they couldn't do it because their familiarity, they're familiar with the cell itself. We're not familiar with what's out here. And so it takes a lot of trust to have somebody go, no, I, I don't know you really well, you don't know me, but please let me help you out here. And, and then when that comes forward, sometimes it comes forward and it's easy to embrace. Uh, I ministered to a woman that, you know, she, was, she went from just being like 45 years old to when that arrestment came forward, she cried and she sobbed and she talked almost like a six-year-old. It just came out of her that way. And I'm okay with that. You should be okay with that. Now in society, that's not okay because we're supposed to be proper. Well, there's a time and a place you got to let your hair down. Right? And church should be one of those times and places Amen. that we should, we should be able to have that trust. Well, then what happens is it, if this door was to swing open and, and that person step out, how scary is that? That's a world that's never been known. If you're 50 years old and this happened when you're two, that's a lot of years have passed. And now I'm asking you to step out. <sighs> that's hard. So this is why we need each other because once that part of you comes forward, you can't be codependent on the person who's helping you out or the people, but you better have a safe group to surround yourself with, yeah. right? Because yeah. we all need safety, permission, and new information. Just getting the new information, if that opens the door, that's great, but I don't really have permission to come out here and grow because <laughs> this is scary. I don't feel safe. So just having the knowledge doesn't mean you're actually going to, the door can swing open and you'll just stand in there. Yeah, I think I'm going to finish out life in here because this is what I know. Yeah? And it's the new thing that we're the most scared of. It's the new thing that, um, that new knowledge, that new uh, level of relationship. It takes more relationship to get free. But if you've been hurt in relationship, you don't want more relationship. But you do but you don't, right? Like, man, I wish I had that, but stay away from me, please. Yeah. I don't really need you in my space right now. I do better on my own. I got this. No, I can handle it. I got a book I'm reading. I don't need you, you know? And it's like, well, that's nice. Now, when I'm dealing with people, I never present. I try not to present that I'm some kind of superhero, and you shouldn't either. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to be like, oh, Katie, I, I've got the answer. It's all me. You know, you just stick with me because I'm the one. No, I ain't nobody's savior. But we do have keys to unlock doors. And just the way a child can come out and run around now and just play in the playground and experience life, or whatever, that's really what we're giving that part permission to do. You have permission to come out. Now, here's the thing. If we are 
as a church and as a people in relationships. We go, I see the arrestment. Okay, I got the word on that. I'm going to let you out. We open the door. And then we go, and you better behave yourself. You were like 10. Oh, my goodness. Straighten up. Right? I mean, that person doesn't, you didn't give them permission to grow. And, and, and they're not going to grow. Now they're just going to be controlled by you, which is another form of abuse. It's a messy world we live in, isn't it? Ugh. It's exhausting. At the same time, God and his grace wants to grow us. He wants to give us the safety. He wants to be able to love on us. And he does it through people, but he does it with his presence. But the problem is, where do you go for, to be in his presence? Think about this. Do we all have a safe group that we can go to and pray and be in the presence of God? Because, yeah, you can do your prayer closet and be by yourself. But actually, you've been by yourself for a long time. You might need to actually be with some people. That's a whole different thing. It's like, well, can I pray back here? Can I? Yeah, sure, you can. But you need to be around some people. Because what you didn't get when you were arrested in development is that type of development. The how do I deal with spatial stuff? How do I live and grow? How do I give love and how do I receive love? I don't even know how to do that. I mean, what are the boundaries in this? How do I know if I'm codependent and not codependent? Oh, that's another reason we'll just say, that's okay. I stepped out for a little bit and just shut the door. No, I'll just stay in here. Because when you come out, it's like there's so much. And that's another reason why we need each other. But the biggest thing that I think, besides safety, is that permission part. I mean, we have to have permission to cry. We have to have permission to talk about it. And we also have to have an avenue back, right? If we did something that, like, say, we participated in sin or somebody sinned against us and then we participated in sin and we're stuck in this arrestment um, and we feel totally separated from God in that area. We've been alone that whole time. And, and now what's our avenue back? See, a lot of times, you know, Christians will say, well, uh, God's going to bless you, who take care of you, just pray this prayer, you're good. And we really, there's a whole, we grew our synaptic nerves around all this experience, and now we're just going to have a pat answer, and we go, okay, yeah, thank you, and suddenly we're just amazing. No, we're going to feel a pressure to be amazing instead of being real. He wants us to, to stay real, to be real. And guess what? No, uh, no child is going to understand authority. So wherever we are arrested in development, no matter what the age group is, authority and that clash. And it'll clash two different ways. One way it'll clash, well, I defy authority. I don't have to listen to you. I've been living on my own. I'm, since I was 10 years old, I've been in that cell. You don't tell me what to do. Who do you think you are? I don't need that. Well, that'll be one of the ways. And the other way will be the personality or that area of us that just goes, go ahead and control me. I don't know where to go, what to do. Just boss me around, take advantage of me, tell me what to do. So it ends up being an all or nothing or just in two ditches. And God's wanting us as, as people to come to a place where, you know, we are in that area of arrestment where we know, yeah, I'm younger than my age group in this. God, help me. Help me get the new information. I'm going to be a part of people groups. I'm going to be a part of uh, studies and different things like that. I'm going, to experience, I'm going to allow myself to be uncomfortable. Now, let's be honest. How many of you stay out of certain situations just because you're uncomfortable emotionally? What if that situation has your answer? Right? It's kind of like having a broken leg and you're just, I'm uncomfortable going to the doctor. Just, it's totally uncomfortable. You got gangrene. I'm still uncomfortable. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, uh, you might want to go get that checked. Right? But there's, if, if we have that, it's going to repel us back and then we'll just get too uncomfortable to do something about it. And you do emotionally get gangrene. It's like a big infected area. It's not good for us, is it? So why I'm saying this is I want to give you permission to actually be yourself. Now, sometimes people have given us that permission before. We'll get the speech from our mom or whoever. You just need to learn to be yourself, honey. I love you just the way you are. You just be yourself. And we go, okay, mom. And then life doesn't let us be ourselves. 
because in this system, there is a controlling thing. We have to see the way big picture that puts us in this arrestment to begin with. There is a big picture that's after your destiny that's trying to take you out. The devil does not want you uh, succeeding or prospering in any way. And why do you think that would be? That's because you are his workmanship. Let's go, uh, let's go to Ephesians. And uh, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Where did I put it? Ephesians chapter 3. No, sorry, 2, and it's verse 10. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, or born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So God has something he's already called over us. He said, Lindsay, this is what I want for your life. He's called that over you. And then you are his workmanship, which basically uh, the word workmanship goes back to, um, it's, it's like a piece of art that he's made. You're his special picture, right? And each of you is different. He's done it in such a way where each of you is different. And here is your, he's saying, here's the good life I have planned for you. And I want you to walk in it. But if he can, if the, if, Darkness can keep us, the power of sin can keep us behind this. There's no way you'll, you'll be your full potential. Yeah, you might even have a halfway decent life, but it would have been a better life, the more free. The more free. How many of you just in the last um, few weeks have felt a part of you reaching through the bars and you keep denying it? It's like, hey, I'm over here. <laughs> Bring me something to eat, you know? It's like, come on. Why aren't you noticing me? Come on, you know? And it's calling out, and you can feel it. You will, you'll know that there'll be a sensation that will go with that if you're used to denying it. it. That sensation, your heart rate will go up, and it's like, oh, there's that thing. Oh. You know, and you start to get uncomfortable. And then usually what will happen is I got to stop everything I'm presently working on, back out of that, because this thing's trying to come forward. And I can't balance shutting this down and maintaining this. So I'm going to back out of going to this group and this and that and the other thing because i got to stop everything because i got to work on this or this thing is going to go bonkers. And I remember the last time I went bonkers, I threw dishes. Or I drove uh, down the road 100 miles an hour, peeling out of the yard and wrecking the grass. Right? That's an adult behavior, right? Isn't that adult behavior? Yeah. Um, so, and so... Um, so there's something to that that God is, if you're his workmanship, that means you're the pitcher and he wants to, to create in you and finish the job. Where sin got in the way, whether you participated in it or it happened to you, it said, nope, 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 nope. You can't go any further in this area. So then it puts pressure on all those other developmental areas that we did get right because now we're out of balance. It's kind of like there's a heavy load on this side and uh, this one's carrying everything, right? It's out of balance. And God is wanting to bring us forward and uh, cause us to come into a picture that maybe we've never seen before. Because the picture you have of yourself behind the bars looks far different than the picture that's out there. Yeah? Picture behind sounds very critical. It sounds condescending. It sounds hateful toward yourself. It sounds punishing. It sounds like, uh, in fact, it'll, it'll get irritated when somebody wants to show you even how you can prosper. Oh, that's stupid. I don't believe in that. <laughs> right? It'll throw little fits about it. Um, because there's just, it's a challenge to it. There's a mature thing trying to challenge this immature. And we can feel that. Many times, this is why we'll stop going to church. Or what we'll do is we'll turn and we'll require the pastors to tune everything. Down. Could you please just tune that down? Like, that's too much. That's way too mature. That's too much meat. That's too can we, and can we do that? What do we got? 15 minutes? I'll give you 15 minutes. And you go ahead and preach. Something really palatable. Something light and fluffy. And then I don't have to feel the pressure 
of moving forward, right? And I could keep this part of me hidden. But when the word goes forth in power and love is in the house, you can't hide it. So once we get that feeling, we're like, I'm out. I am out. How do I know this? I mean, when I came into the church for the first time, there was revival going on and, and the seats were full and I came and sat in the front. I only lasted so long. I mean, it was, I felt like I was having my own personal heart attack. It was like this, there's way too much information here that I do not understand. And I, I went out to the parking lot. I thought I was going to throw up. Then I tried it again the next time. And I tried it again. Because I had so many arrestments in me, so much that was held captive, and I could feel so much freedom. And to bring this over and trust that, I'm taking a huge chance. If I'm going to bring this over to trust that, it's like, it felt like an all or nothing. Yeah? And I wanted something in the in-between. I wanted something that was like, well, let's not do all or nothing. Let's just, just do a little bit of something. Well, the problem is when you move by the presence of God, he's all love. And he's all. <laughs> he's all love. And all you have to do is get close to that. And it's like, <gasps> and he wants to add to us. But as soon as I say that, for some of you, if I say God wants to bless you, I'm speaking to that child in you. He wants to add to you. He wants to mature to you. He actually wants you to prosper. He wants you to lead. There's come a time you're going to be a leader. Well, you say that mature thing that's actual truth to the child in you, it'll be like, uh-uh, no uh you don't know what you're talking about. That's dumb. Nothing ever good happens to me, and there'll be an argument that'll come. And where's that argument? The strongest. It's not between you and the devil. It's between you and you. And it doesn't want you to move. So all I'm doing tonight is really kind of saying, check this out. Let me reveal this. Let's take a little peek in there. Let's see what's in this cell. Let's, let's reveal it. Because once you know, you can't not know. So when you leave, God's going to bring some memories forward. There's some arms reaching out here tonight. Saying, let's deal with that thing. In each one of us. Saying, help me. Please open the door. Please. Please. It's saying, come on, let, let me move ahead. Is there something I can do? Could you come back and take care of me? I'm not your age group. I'm 53. And so in some sense, there's certain parts of my brain, if, if they have emotion like that, in a sense, are saying, why did you leave me behind? You moved on, and I'm stuck here. That's a war within the soul, isn't it? You moved on, and I'm stuck here. Where grace would say to yourself, you turn, you say, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I got to stop and work on me. That's what I'm going to do. I'm working on the now, maintaining my job and all that, but I'm going to put a whole bunch of effort into working here. I don't want you jailed like that. I love you. Do you love yourself that way? Because that's the first step, asking God to show you mercy and grace for yourself. Now, the little kid in you, if you say, yeah, I want help, make that telephone call, you call a counselor, you're going to show up at church or whatever, the, the little kid in you will say, well, nobody ever comes to help me, or they don't help me the right way, or they lied to me, or they, and there'll be every excuse, and it'll look like you're trying to get help, but you're not going to follow through and get that help. See? Because there's no grace coming your way to say, it's okay, I love you. So there's a retaliation against it because it, the, that part of you feels like it has to defend itself. That little kid inside of you feels like it has to defend itself from you because you're really hard on you, right? And we, we punish ourselves because we want to be accepted in this world. We want to be a part of a group. We want whatever that dream is, and some of it can be arrestments that's grandiose and it's not even a reality, but we, whatever that dream is, we, we want that. And yet we're so hard on ourselves. when rather the, the person that should have the pressure on should be our most mature us. See, the most mature us should be saying, I'm going to get a word from God, and we're getting you out of there. You're not going to stay there anymore. The most mature us. Um, and the reason that immature part comes so strong, it's in our emotional base. It trumps the top part of our brain. We've talked about that here at Word of Life before, where that emotional part of your brain will heat up, 
And then when that happens, it'll trump the top part of your brain you can't even think, right? So you're trying to think and all you can feel is all this emotion. But what ends up happening with, with this is, is to turn and give grace means I'm going to turn and give you something I don't think you deserve. I'm going to imitate my father. Grace is the thing he gave us, right? Forgiveness, and we don't deserve it. Mercy is when he withholds the thing we do deserve. So we should have mercy and grace on ourselves. What that does, instead of trying to figure out how to open this door, pull that kid out, straighten them out, you're going to get your act together. Quit bothering me when I'm at work. Quit making me cry. Quit annoying me. Quit making me lose sleep. I have about had it with you. That's how we treat that part. Um, it's more of like, let's stop here. Let's stop and let me just love, uh, love on that part. I'm so sorry. And I'm going to take you to God now. That's what I'm going to do. See, that's a different kind of thing. That's where you're leading yourself. See it? The little kid in us doesn't want to hear from us. They want, I, I want Jeremy to help me. Jeremy's my friend, and he's going to be the one. I'm just going to hang with Jeremy all the time, and Jeremy's got to give me what I need. And see, there becomes a codependent thing because I'm going to make Jeremy, he's going to heal me. Um, well, uh, the most mature me, we want to avoid then. That's the little kid in us saying, I want to be codependent. But we don't want to talk to the most mature because the most mature part of us has also been condescending to that little person and saying, I don't want to hear from you. You get in my way. You make me look bad. How many of you feel like there's a part of you that makes you look bad? I mean, if we could really just video it, you'd be like, oh, that's going to be bad. Some of us, some of us fear because, you know, we've heard stories where, where people were taught, you know, and there's a certain, I believe there is going to be some videotape that's going to be played in heaven. But there's, there's some people who have used that with their kids where they go, when you get to heaven, God's going to replay this whole thing. And you're going to see. And so there's a fear that's kind of like, oh, my goodness. And you grow up with that, and that's implanted into you. Then it's like, I can't let anybody see anything. And then we fear going to heaven. There's a lot that people fear about heaven, and there's no better place. Isn't that crazy? There's no better place to be than heaven. But we fear it because we have this whole thing of like, you're going to get in trouble. That comes from that punishing. Fear brings with it the thought of torment and the thought of punishment. That's what the scripture says. So when fear comes, it's from this side over here. Why? There's no grace coming from that adult side. So what would it look like for you to give yourself grace tonight? Think about that. What would it look like? What would you say to yourself? What word would you speak over you? Because what's making it hard for us to operate in faith is we're hoping someone else is going to speak that word because we can't trust us. That little kid is saying, I don't trust. That part of me is always yelling at me, trying to spank me, trying to get me in order, trying to punish me, trying to you know, do whatever. And so what would you say to yourself tonight? How would you give yourself grace? I can give you all kinds of steps, but I want you to think about that. We're going to come and visit that as soon as I, I finish up here, and then we're, we're going to open it up for questions and answers. Um, there's some days that I get up and something has triggered in me. I know it's really hard to believe, but there are some days that it, this is the sign that comes up. It's like... I, you know, I probably should keep this on my side of the bed, and then Fern says something, I just go, <laughs> I cannot adult today, okay? You know, so, oh, well, okay, so you're in your arrestment. I mean, because <laughs> there, is, there is that part. And see, just us laughing about it is a healthy thing because it should make us relax to be able to say, this is what's real. Real people have real success. This is the real me. I've been touched by sin in certain areas. And God has given forgiveness, which means the power of it's been sent away, but the residue of it here needs healing. The scars, the, the open wounds, they got to be healed. So there's a trick in what's happening in our society right now when it comes to coming to God. Now, I don't want you to hear this wrong, so I want you to pay real close attention, okay? Because 
the trick is that we're looking for the superhero that's out there that's going to heal us. If I could just find that man of God, that woman of God, if I could just find that person, if I could, if I could just have that boyfriend, if I could just have, and it's a codependent way of thinking. Do we need each other? Absolutely. But the person who has and should have the most faith for you is who? You. Because faith is nigh even in thy, it's, he can speak faith over me and that's going to really help me out. But the most that's going to help me is right here. And what comes out my mouth is in my heart. And how I feel about myself is going to direct what I say about myself. So if I'm not going to give myself grace, I say things like, ah, oh, stupid, what, I broke that again. How many times, I mean, come on. See, that's me punishing myself. Instead of saying, whoa, that didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. God, give me the grace, try that again. See, that was a different conversation you have with yourself. But the most punishment you'll get will be from yourself. But also, if you flip that, the most help you can get is from yourself through his word. And how that works, and I don't want you to hear me wrong, that it's like humanistic, like I don't need people and I'm going to do this. No, and that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is for you to turn your faith on for you. If you can't turn your faith on for you, you'll keep going from one superhero to the next. And you'll find out they're not a superhero. Huh, I got to go find another one. Oh, they're not a superhero either. And in the process, you're actually accumulating more pain because we're putting people in a spot they shouldn't be in. We're making them our source rather than I have a relationship with God and I'm going to hear from my God. And Katie, you're going to agree in prayer with me and we're going to pray for this and this is where we're going. But I'm not saying Katie is my God. And if she fails me, then I'm not going to church anymore. I'm not even reach out for help anymore because I trusted Katie. See the trick? trick it's a lie from the pit yep. and so i like to expose those things <laughs> it's kind of fun really it's like check this out um so <laughs> because once you see it you go oh and then when you go to live out your life you you see that and you go nope this is a trick this is a trick this is a snare of the devil he's trying to get me to turn on myself because as soon as you turn on you you have no faith for you so when they were crossing the lake uh, I did a series on this, uh, Journey to the Impossible. It's out in the, in the hall there if you want to take a look at it. But when they were crossing over the lake and the, the storm came and the disciples were freaking out and Jesus turned to them and said, uh, why are you afraid? See, he didn't go, I am your hero. I shall, he didn't. He said, why are you afraid? He calmed the waters and he turned to them like, so in some sense, he, he might have been saying, why are you turning on yourself? Why are you turning into yourself? And, and you don't trust you, and, and you're looking at those parts and punishing that part that's even more afraid, and you're ramping that up. Why didn't you turn toward the word or saying something out your mouth that would have faith in it? And he wasn't saying that to condemn them, like, what's your problem? Why don't you do that? He was asking them the question so they'd go, yeah, why didn't we do that? That's, that's kind of weird. We didn't do that. There must be something going on inside of me, right? God will ask you questions like that. And he'll ask you a question so that you turn and you look at yourself, not to condemn you, to, but to speak faith to you. So think about this. What was the last faith thing you said over yourself or to yourself? When was the last time that happened? When well, you looked in the mirror and you go, I love you. You're going to rock this thing because God is in you and we're going somewhere. I mean, he is healing you right now. You're looking in the mirror. You're looking right into your soul. He is healing you right now. And uh, there is grace for you. I choose to forgive. And I'm for forgiven. See? And we start moving into that. And you start, there's a whole happy feeling that comes that says, grace be unto you and peace. Not as the world gives, right? But as he gives that peace to us. And as we look and we speak the word of faith over ourselves. We can't do it, though, if we're used to punishing ourselves. And guess what happens when you're in a habit of punishing and keeping this in line? And I say to you, stop doing that. And you go, okay, I'm going to stop doing that. There's actually a fear that says, if I don't keep punishing here, this thing is, this, <laughs> these kids that are inside of me are going to come forward and eat my lunch. I have to punish. 
we got, I mean, they all need to stay put and be quiet and, uh, you know, all of this and, and whatever I got to do, I take stuff away from them or whatever to make sure they're silenced or they're going to come forward. Uh, see how messed up it is in our society when really health is when we, we can see somebody like, hey, you know what? I went in and got, look, look at this side of me. I just brought it forward. Isn't she beautiful? She's just a kid. Can you give me grace because I'm working here? She's going to grow. This is part of me, though. And God's given me grace, and I'm going to give grace. But no, that's what, but then people would see, and people would know, and we've got to go back to punishing so they don't see and know. It's jacked up. It's jacked up. And now t- turn that into, you come into a setting like a church or a business or anything like that, and you want to be accepted, and you feel like you've got to move up the ladder. So then what you do is you start looking, how, how's everyone acting? How do you fit in? And then I'll be that, and you be quiet, because you always interrupt me being that. And then what we're doing is we'll take all this time trying to be an avatar instead of finding out who really are you because who you are is very gifted. Who you are is very loved by God, has been created in his image and is unique. There's nobody here who's me. I'm me. Yeah? You can't do what I do because when you do it, it comes out like how you do it. Right? So you're like, I can do that. Well, that's actually how you would do it. And, it came, and that's Okay. Right? But we, we've got this mentality that we're going to run as a herd. We've all got to be the same and make sure you stay in the box. And it's, it's just jacked. The best choir is when everybody sings a different note in harmony. Yeah? Different tones, the baritones, the altos. The, be who you are. And if that's been held back... Uh, I want to give opportunity tonight to kind of talk about that a little bit. We're going to pray and, and kind of give permission for that to move forward. Not kind of, we're actually going to do it. So I say kind of, I don't know. I was trying to break, it, break into it easy. No, actually, we're going to do it. Um, so we're going to give permission for that. And your mind, your subconscious has actually been waiting for permission. And here's the thing. I've been standing up here, and as I'm talking, I can see different faces just going. There, there's a longing look on your face like, just give me permission already, will you? And you you're probably don't even see yourself. You're not seeing how you're looking. But it's that part of you. It's that part of you that's going, somebody just saw me. Somebody just saw. They're coming for me. They're going to come for me. This, this could be it. But if it's the part where you've punished yourself, then there needs to be some kind of makeup because you can't just turn and just go, I've been yelling at you for years, and so now I'm going to love you. And this part of you goes, oh, and I trust you so much. It doesn't. That part of you just goes, no, actually, you've been mean to me this whole time. So this is when we go before God and we say, God, forgive me for hating on me. Let's stand. I'm just going to say a phrase so they can kind of cut, cut, cut out the video here um, to, to end this. If you're watching and you're wanting freedom in this area, there's so much more to this. So we, we can't get that all in, in one sermon night or one seminar night. Um, there will be contact information on your CD set or coming across the screen where you can get a hold of us and be able to get the helps that you need. But the best thing you can do is give yourself permission to be loved and turn to yourself and forgive and have mercy and grace.